Yesterday, Apple launched its new iPhone lineup, the iPhone 17, the 17 Pro and Pro Max, and the ultra slim iPhone Air. And along with the new models is the debut of two new connectivity chips, the N1 and C1X cellular modem. We've got all the details. Let's dive into the new iPhones from the connectivity perspective. Hi, I'm Chris of the Mobile Internet Resource Center, and it's been kind of a tradition here going way, way back that we take a look at the what's new on the connectivity front when Apple announces new iPhone models every year. Now, normally we don't focus on cell phones, in particular cell phone models here at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, but the iPhone is kind of an exception because it is the best-selling phone in the world, and it kind of sets the stage and the pace and the, the trends for the entire mobile internet industry. So seeing what's new with Apple has always been kind of educational and interesting. And we've kept up this annual tradition for a long time, covering what's new with every year's iPhone launch, strictly from a connectivity standpoint. If you wanna talk about the cameras or the slim cases or the extra scratch proofing or any of that other stuff, there's a million other sites on the internet that will be doing deep dives into all those other iPhone features but we're pretty much the only place that really focuses on what's new on the connectivity front. And there are some really interesting new developments here for 2025 with Apple's new lineup, both on the cellular and Wi-Fi front. So first, starting with the cellular side of things. Now, Apple in the past had always had a tradition of every new year the iPhone would be taking that year's flagship Qualcomm cellular modem and being built around it with the bringing the, the latest high-end cellular capabilities and specifications to a big mainstream market. It was kind of the, the big mainstream debut of Qualcomm's latest flagship modems. That trend stopped last year with the iPhone 16. Instead of bringing out the Qualcomm X75 modem as expected, last year's iPhone 16 had some weird oddball Qualcomm X71 modem that still a year later remind, remains a bit of a mystery. It's something that neither Qualcomm or Apple will officially talk about on the record, but it seems to be basically just a slightly modified version of the earlier X70. This is Apple forking from the Qualcomm mainstream cellular roadmap. Um, it has been long known in the industry that Apple had a big long-term plan of trying to ditch Qualcomm entirely and do its own cellular modem so it'd be no longer dependent on Qualcomm, the cellular modem king of the industry. And that trend is now continuing. So um, earlier this year in 2025, Apple brought out the iPhone 16e, the low-end, low-cost, mainstream version of the iPhone 16. And that was the first debut of an Apple C1 modem, Apple's first in-house developed 5G modem. And it is was basically focused on bringing more power efficiency and lower cost to Apple's most cost-effective iPhone model. So it was a pretty major technical achievement to have their own in-house developed cellular modem, but they completely downplayed it up until now. Now coming into 2025, the, the mainstream iPhone launches, their high-end iPhone launches, the new brand new iPhone Air model is bringing out a, um, the Apple C1X modem. This is so, so this new C1X modem that is debuting in the, the iPhone Air, Apple says is up to twice as fast as the C1. And for the same cellular technologies, it's even faster than the um, Qualcomm, they don't say Qualcomm, but than the modem that was in the iPhone 16 Pro last year, all while using 30% less power, which is a pretty impressive improvement um, and you know, pretty exciting to see Apple be able to do this. So that is debuting in the iPhone Air. Apple's now bringing out their own um, kind of what they think is mainstream cellular modem in one of their high-end devices. But this is, is a step back in some ways as well. Apple still has not figured out how to do millimeter wave 5G. So this is the ultra fast, ultra high frequency, kind of the peak performance versions of 5G. So the C1X and the, the, the lower end C1 that came earlier this year does not have millimeter wave support. So this is kind of a step back in specifications um, from basically every 5G iPhone that has been out in the USA so far. So 
that is a step back to be aware of, but millimeter wave has actually not lived up to its early hype. This was kind of part of the, the launch of 5G in the US and Verizon, it was a big part of their 5G launch, but millimeter wave has not really gone anywhere. The millimeter wave coverage maps have not expanded much. Millimeter wave is super short range 5G technology, insanely fast, but super short range. So it's only really been used in um, malls, stadiums, urban cores, airports, and all the carriers that have started to do uh, millimeter wave deployments have basically stopped expanding their coverage maps over the past year or two and millimeter wave is seemingly kind of a stalled technology it has never caught on overseas um, in any place other than the united states and in fact apple has no never even shipped millimeter wave on other than the u.s bound iphone model so the the iphone air giving up on millimeter wave with the new c1x modem is probably not that big of a deal does the, the um, C1X compromise in any other ways compared to Qualcomm modems? Um, it's hard to know for sure, but the C1 in early testing showed on um, that it had less carrier ag aggregation capabilities than the equivalent generation of Qualcomm modems. So on T-Mobile's network, where they're really pushing 5G, it performed a little bit, you know, less comparative but overall in most real world cases it was actually a pretty solid modem in real world use so we're eager to see what the c1x is like when real world tests come out now the c1x though is only in the iphone air what about the iphone 17 the 17 pro and the 17 pro max well those are almost certainly still using a qualcomm modem um, Apple's not ready to, to change out the entire lineup yet. That'll probably come next year. So, but what Qualcomm modem is Apple going to be using in this year's lineup of, of um, iPhones other than the Air? It remains to be seen until there's the first teardowns. It could be the same kind of a mysterious X71 from last year. It could be the a Qualcomm X75 that they seemingly skipped over last year, or probably most likely the they might, Apple might be using the Qualcomm X80. It's the same flagship uh, um, Qualcomm modem that uh, the latest, like the Samsung Galaxy S25 are using the latest uh, Android flagships. That is a very, very capable modem. It is um, really pushing not just 5G, but 5G advanced standards, but nothing in Apple specs reveals any details about that at all. In fact, basically the, the, the band specifications and the other details that Apple reveals show only the smallest possible changes from what was supported in the past. There's in fact, just one cellular band that is not added, but actually removed. There's one 5G band that is no longer being supported, but it's not an important band. It's a band for Europe that was never actually deployed. We've got some details over in the blog post that goes along with this. So that's what's new on the cellular front. We, we still don't know specifically what's up with the, um, the actual cellular modem that will be in the iPhone 17, but we are kind of excited about the C1X. And this is the beginning of the end for Qualcomm and Apple working together. Uh, next year, there'll probably be a C2, and that will be when Apple takes their own cellular modems across their product line. Uh, if not next year, it'll certainly continue to be uh, spreading and spreading more as they continue to perfect their cellular technologies to really rival Qualcomm. So interesting race there. Do you want to help keep this channel afloat? Well, you can do that by joining us over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center and become a member. And if membership is not for you, there's easier ways to support us. Just like, subscribe, comment, and share. Share our content, help get out to more people, and that keeps us floating and bringing more connectivity content to you. <laughs> The other news on the connectivity front in the uh, new iPhone lineup, all of the new iPhones, um, the, the 17 and 17 Pro and the uh, iPhone Air feature a new N1 chip that does, uh, the, this is Apple's first in-house designed uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and now they're also supporting thread networking, which is a home networking standard, their own um, in-house designed chip for that as well. In their phones. So this is again pushing out. Mostly Apple has relied on Broadcom in the past for their iPhone, for their uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chips. Now they're going to have their own chip that they say is more power efficient and will give them increased performance and reliability, or particularly around things like personal hotspot 
and um, continuity features where your like iPhone and uh, um, laptops are working together and stuff like that. So this new chip is supports Wi-Fi 7. We've talked about Wi-Fi 7 in the past that it really pushes Wi-Fi to kind of new heights of capabilities. Um, it uses 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz spectrum, so three spectrum bands that are all combined together and used simultaneously. So Wi-Fi 7 is a pretty exciting uh, new technology. It was in last year's iPhone models, but again, using third-party chips. Now Apple is doing their own Wi-Fi 7, and they're also supporting Bluetooth 6 for the first time. Bluetooth 6 is the next evolution of the Bluetooth standard. It will make for more reliable um, Bluetooth connections, particularly in the future as Bluetooth accessories start supporting Bluetooth 6 on the side, on their end of the thing. So it's much more future-proof on the Wi-Fi standpoint, the Bluetooth standpoint. Uh, thread networking for home automation devices is pretty cool to have as well. So a lot of uh, evolution as far as new capabilities and new capabilities developed in-house by Apple, which is interesting to see. And particularly Apple's focus has always been on squeezing out more power efficiency, which is, um, you know, probably plays into the big jumps in battery life on the new iPhone models. One other thing that is playing into the jumps in battery life is you know, most of the um, iPhone models in the United States for the past several years have been eSIM only. So no SIM slots on the side you had, no physical SIM slots. But the international versions did have SIM slots and that space inside the iPhones was just kind of going to waste in the USA. The new models, the, the iPhone um, 17 Pros in particular, instead of having uh, physical SIM slots, they are, that space inside is now being used for extra battery life. And actually you get about two hours of extra battery life for the USA version of the um, iPhone 17 Pro, as opposed to the international version that still has a physical SIM slot. So you're really getting an extra advantage for giving up those physical SIM slots and going eSIM only. And Apple is now pushing eSIM beyond just the USA. So now the Canadian slash Mexican slash Japanese model is also eSIM only. The European and Chinese models of the iPhone 17 and 17 Pro, they still have a physical SIM slot, but also eSIM support. So, but they have, they give up some battery life for that. And as for the um, iPhone Air, because it is so small and slim, there is no space designed into that at all. So it is eSIM only around the world um, because they need every possible cubic millimeter for battery life to try and get as much capacity out of that as they can. So that is the changes on the cellular front there, the Wi-Fi front, the eSIM front. The other bit of evolution with Apple's announcements yesterday is around, well, not so much evolution, but some kind of broadening of their satellite network. So Apple, since the iPhone um, 14 has had satellite networking capabilities, satellite messaging capabilities built into every iPhone um, using partnership with Global Star's existing legacy satellite network. And so you can do emergency SOS and they've expanded it to be basic test, test, text messaging and sharing your location and everything else from every iPhone since the iPhone 14 uh, has that feature built into it. That seems to be not changing at all with the new lineup, the uh, iPhone uh, 17, 17 Pro and the Air all have that exact same capabilities built into it. But now the Ultra 3 watch, the latest version of Apple's Ultra watch also has satellite messaging built into it, uh, which is kind of impressive that you can like fall off a cliff and have your watch automatically call for help from a satellite no matter where you are, if you have a, a clear view of the sky. So that's a kind of exciting safety feature to have um, for people who are going really out in the boonies. Although most of the time you'd probably still have your phone with you anyway, but still nice to have that sort of technology going even into watches. And the other thing on the, the satellite front is, well, Apple is always, when they launched their satellite features, they said it would be free for two years. Well, that's been now many, many years past that they, had, is, uh, they haven't figured out what they want to charge their, for their satellite features. So still free for two years if you buy a new phone. And even if you bought an iPhone 14 the day it came out, way back when Apple has now just extended everybody's free service for another year. So if you had a, a already had an iPhone, you get another free year of service. So maybe by this time next year, they'll figure out when, if, and how they want to charge for their satellite features, and they might be expanding them beyond just basic text messaging. Meanwhile, 
We've talked about uh, T-Mobile satellite and partnership with Starlink. That is, of course, also supported by all the iPhone models, even all the way back to the iPhone 13. That is, works in, you can use both Apple's satellite service, or if you have T-Mobile, you can use T-Satellite. Um, they can actually work in conjunction with each other. So you've got kind of a lot of satellite redundancy built into the iPhones now, which is kind of cool. Uh, so that is the basic update on what is new on the connectivity front with Apple's uh, uh, lineup of iPhones. Um, go check 7,000 other sites on the internet if you want to hear what else is new about all the iPhones. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff there, and you can decide if you're intrigued about upgrading or waiting or whatever, or if you're not an iPhone person, well, it's just always interesting to see what is new on the connectivity front because every other um, phone device maker kind of gets their inspiration from Apple. So we'll kind of see where they all go from this in the years ahead. Um, but the phone iPhones will go up for um, pre-order this Friday and will be shipping next Friday. And that's when we'll find out what actual hardware is inside, and we'll start to get some real-world testing, and we'll know what modem is in there when the teardowns come in. So stay tuned for that info. We'll be updating the blog post that goes along with this video with uh, the details on the when the teardowns come in. So check that, and we'll link from the YouTube uh, description back to that post. So go to that post, and you'll find out more about what how the connectivity evolves on these iPhones. And again, if you are an MIA member, you come over and join us over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center and uh, yeah, let us know. Are you excited about Wi-Fi 7? Do you want routers to support supporting Wi-Fi 7 so that you can have uh, those kind of uh, Wi-Fi capabilities in your house? Is these sort of cellular um, updates every year still interesting? Or is now that Apple is diverging from Qualcomm, should we give up doing our annual iPhone deep dive analysis? Let us know if you're a member over at the Mobile Internet Research Center. And if you're not yet a member, come join us. Anyway, that's the update. Take care. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.